Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival. Let's talk about strength versus adaptability today. Now, let's start out with a quote. Uh, it's most attributed to Charles Darwin, which I don't agree with what most of anything he said, but uh, this quote actually isn't proven to be from him. But the quote, It is not the strongest of a species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Do I agree? Mm, maybe. I, I think it all depends on the circumstances, the situation, what scenario you're going through. Of course, there are many different survival scenarios, SHTF scenarios, that have occurred, and you can uh, research and look and see who survived. Not always the ones that are most adaptable that survive. It's not always the ones who are the strongest that survive, or it's not always the ones who are the most intelligent that survive. Sometimes a bit of all three, sometimes one of it, one or the other, but it's not always the same one. Now, I'll give you an example. In a massive flooding situation, which we've had a lot of recently in the Midwest and throughout the farm belt, in a massive flooding situation, is it going to be the one who's most adaptable to live in the water? The one that's most adaptable to pick a movie where the world flooded. There's several of them. I mean, no. It's the one who can swim the farthest because he's the strongest. That's the one who survives. Maybe the smartest one survived because he built a boat. But the one that was most adaptable to adapt to the environment, not likely he's probably still going to drown. Just because you can adapt to living in a certain environment doesn't mean you can sustain it very long. So, yeah, you can adapt to live next to a volcano that's constantly erupting, but that doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it for very long. So it's not the most adaptable that's always going to survive. So just, yeah, it's not. Let's see. Uh, the smartest won't always be the person that survives. I mean, take a look at any university in the country. I mean, I can give you a list, but just pick one. There are people there that will absolutely not survive even the smallest of disasters. Now, I can tell you about brainwashing and conditioning and why people are dumber than what they should be, but that's not the point. The point is that most of them believe that somebody is going to save them. They have the superhero complex. Not that they're going to be a superhero, but that there is such a thing as a superhero that is going to come and save them. A police officer, fire, firemen, you know, medics, EMTs, whatever. Doctors, nurses. Anyway, somebody's always going to be there to save them, right? No matter what the situation. Let's uh, go talk to some people that went through Katrina, see if they agree with that or people that died in 9-11. Do you think they would agree with that? No. So, it's not always going to be the smartest people that survive. Now, I guess you could make the argument that people in universities aren't that smart. You mean you're going to a university, you're paying a lot of money to probably make way less than you could ever afford to pay off your student loans because that's the way the system is designed, in my opinion. But anyway. So, most adaptable to change, not always going to survive. Most intelligent, probably less than the most adaptable person, I would say. So, how about the strongest? The strongest going to survive every time. Sorry, I had to move the phone and my big old hand. Okay, my little hand got in the way. The strongest probably will survive nine times out of ten, in my opinion. Now, don't quote me on this because I haven't done any research but just from the experiences I've had, and yeah, I'm very adaptable. As a person, I am very adaptable. I have moved from state to state. I have been to, uh, what is it, 45 current states, currently 45 states I have visited. And they all look the same, so I guess it's not really a big adaption. But yeah, I can adapt to just about anything. Am I the strongest person? No. Will I ever be the strongest person? No. Does my Glock make me stronger? Sometimes. I mean, in certain situations, yeah, if you got somebody who's, you know, six foot ten, weighs 400 pounds, and he's got a baseball bat in his hand, and he's coming to smash your skull in, 
yeah, my, my Glock will make me stronger. But that, I suppose, is falling under the realm of intelligence because I know enough not to let a 400-pound, 6'10 person come and bash my skull in because I have a Glock. So, uh, you know, that's debatable. But if I don't have a Glock and the guy who is so much bigger and stronger than me is coming to smash my skull in, is my adaptability going to save me? No. Will my intelligence save me? More than likely. Because I'm, you know, I'm 5'8", about 150 some odd pounds. I'm skinny, little, and squirrely. I can run really quick. I can hide a lot easier than somebody who's 6'10 and 400 pounds. I'm pretty sure that he's not going to catch me. So, it's not my adaptability, because I didn't adapt to the situation. But I was smart enough to get out of the situation. Or I was in the realm of strong, if that's the way you want to count it. I still chalk it up to intelligence to carry a firearm, but if I, of course, had my Glock, then, yeah, I could end the situation. Would that be smart? Probably not, because then you got to deal with police and, you yeah. know. But that's all a matter of your scenario. If it's a without rule of law scenario, then, yeah, Glock wins every time. Glock versus baseball bat. Never bring a knife to a gunfight, right? Of course, that is inherently flawed because nine times out of ten, depending on how far away you are from the guy with the knife, the knife's probably still going to win. You could probably shoot the knife guy, but he's going to get you. Have you ever seen the videos where the people get on the, the guy with the gun before the guy can pull the gun out and the guy with the knife wins pretty much every time? Yeah, I've seen them. So, I think we have established that just because somebody claims to have made, said something intelligent doesn't make it, you know, intelligent. Just because somebody said that the most adaptable is going to survive doesn't mean that pertains to every scenario. Uh, just because somebody said that evolution was real doesn't make it any more real or any less of an actual theory. So, yeah, that's about all I got for today. So, uh, yeah, adaptability is just not going to save you. Even if you're extremely adaptable, it's just not going to save you. So, what you're really wanting to do is get into the mid-range. Make sure you're intelligent to begin with. And if you're not, start reading some books. I mean, yeah, and I'm not talking about intelligence that you learn from a school. I'm under the opinion that schools don't teach you anything anyway. Uh, your math skills probably not going to help you in a survival situation. Your science skills, maybe. Your history, eh, it's actually good to know a lot of history because you can learn from other people's mistakes in history. So that's a good skill to have. But strength, physical strength. I guess I'm going to go back to the gym. I have been neglecting the gym for the last, oh, about a month. So I probably will go back to the gym, work on my upper body strength. As a truck driver, I have a very strong left leg. If you don't get the reference, uh, yeah. All we do is push a seven pound clutch all day long. If you are using the clutch. But that's another story. My right leg, not quite as strong. But the reason I say this is because I can carry a 35 pound pack on my back. It's, it's right here next to me. I can carry it on my back for a minimum of 10 miles before I really need to take a long break. Five miles, I will take probably a small break, but after 10 miles, I'm considering the end of my day. I can get better, but also I could build more upper body strength. Strength training. I don't gotta be the strongest, but strong enough, I guess. I don't gotta be the smartest, but smart enough. So learning skills, how to tie knots, how to build shelters, how to grow food, you know, the basics. And adaptable. I'm already adaptable. Life circumstances have just made me that way. So if you're not adaptable, if you are one of the people that hate change and you, yeah, it's not feasible to drastically change your life, like move to a different state, different city. Um, but it is a possibility to spend a weekend living in your car. Spend a weekend living in, at a friend's house on their couch. Somebody that, you know, they are probably like-minded and will help you test theories. Or buy them beer, whatever it takes. Go live on a friend's couch. 
go just do something that is completely not normal, that is prolonged, involves you staying somewhere, not sleeping in your normal place, get out of your comfort zone, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This is how you build adaptability skills. Uh, as for intelligence, I mean, uh, who was the comedian? I can't remember. Ron White says, you can't fix stupid. You really can if you have the motivation to do so. I mean, if there's like some inherent brain disease that makes you unable to learn, then yeah, I guess you can't fix stupid, but learn. You can learn. I can learn. Believe me, you can learn. So there it is. Strength training, go to the gym. Adaptability, force yourself to get out of your comfort zone. And what was the third one? Yeah. <laughs> Intelligence. Go read a book. So anyway, that's enough for today. Remember, survival is grim.